what's going on hello and welcome to cereal of midnight this is fresh flavors i'm heath we are talking about well fresh flavors is normally new releases but and that's mostly what this is but i've, I've thrown in a few things here that are new to me because i thought maybe they'd be new to you as well and we could talk about you know if i can raise the profile of something that maybe we haven't talked well we've never talked about it but that maybe you don't know about um it's still fresh right it's still a fresh flavor for you so let's kick it off with the new 4k of can you guys see that? A Flatliners from Arrow Video. Uh, this is new. 4K. <laughs> Just repeating myself here. Uh, there's the new artwork. Here's the original poster artwork. This is the one I know. Uh, I love this movie. I respect this movie. This movie freaks me out. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This movie, it's... I don't think it's an outright horror movie. It's more of a thriller. These medical... If you've never seen it, these medical students uh, are experimenting with, like learning more about what happens after you die and they're stopping their hearts and like <laughs> trying to figure out what happens as you cross over and then they bring themselves back really freaky stuff for me because it's kind of realistic right like you could see that happening uh it doesn't feel super fantastical there's no freddy or like a slasher it's like what happens when you stop your heart uh upsetting stuff but it's a great movie great cast too Kiefer sutherland julia roberts this is like at the peak of their uh, like the Brat Pack era, right? So uh, Kiefer, Julia Roberts, uh, William Baldwin, Oliver Platt, Kevin Bacon. What is this, 91, I want to say? Uh, 90, 1990. Um, so the 4K restoration comes from the original camera negative. Um, so looks great. It's a, And it's a film, you know, 35 millimeter, so it's not one of those stupid digitally shot <laughs> 4, 4Ks. I'm kind of joking, but I'm kind of not. Like digital stuff is just so flat. It's like it's like an MP3 or something. I don't know. That's a it's a bad comparison. Pull pull out Heath abort. Um, hey, while I'm ranting, why did they remake Flatliners? Does anyone like or respect or care about the remake of Flatliners when we have this cool original? Why do they remake some of these awesome movies directed by Joel Schumacher, uh, coming off the Lost Boys? Right, he's got he's like Kiefer. Let's do another movie, Flatliners. Like we don't need to remake these things. Julia Roberts, you're not going to get better than that. Why do they remake Point Break? You know what I'm saying? You got Keanu Reeves, you got Patrick Swayze. Let's remake it. Does anyone watch? Maybe you watch them. Do you remember them? And when you're like, I want to see Point Break, which one are you going to go to? You want to see Flatliners? Which one are you going to go to? I suspect this one right here anyway original camera negative restoration uh tons of stuff tons of bonus features here here let me did i hold this up for you guys hold um, read it for yourself or freeze frame that if you want to read everything there uh but i mean there's a ton of stuff we got a new let's see new commentary by brian reisman and max every we've got a new interview with uh the screenwriter a new interview with the director of photography jan debont jan debont uh, and Chief Lighting Technician Edward Ayer. We've got a brand new video interview with the first assistant director, a brand new video interview with production designer uh, Eugenio Zanetti, the art director. I mean, tons and tons of stuff. And there's the, the you know, we get the booklet in the first... Booklet comes in the first pressing. By the way, the card in here is for Edge of Sanity with Tony Perkins. Uh, this... I, I love the booklets. We're going to talk more about these booklets later in this video. In fact, I think we're going to end with, is the information, when an arrow booklet goes out of print, is that information gone forever? Stay tuned. Okay, so this is the contents. These are the contents. This is the contents. Anyway, here's the table of contents for what's included here. We've got an, uh, uh, an essay, Land of the Almost Dead, Flatliners, and a historical overview of the near-death experience by Amanda Reyes, who always brings it hard. See you soon, The Surprising Spirituality of Joel Schumacher's Flatliners by Peter Tongat. Uh, absolutely wonderful stuff. And I love learning. I, I like digging into movies. This is how I like to dig into movies. 
learn explorations, essays, really having deeper conversations. I say this sometimes as someone who's just fired up TikTok. By the way, official serial at midnight uh, on TikTok, which I'll link it's in the link of the description. Every video has all our social links. Um, we are not served by small conversations about movies. We need to be having deeper, longer, more meaningful discussions about the things that we love. Follow me on TikTok. <laughs> all right. Also, from uh, this is 101 Films. This is a brand new. Uh, actually, I think this actually came out like last. It's new to me. I didn't even know about it, right? It's one of those things I was like, that came out? I just found out about it. It's the last broadcast. Um, I have written a review for this at serialatmidnight.com. If you want to know everything that I think about the movie, get actual film review at serialatmidnight.com. This is a shot on video, well, it's shot digitally. It's actually the first movie to be shot, edited, and distributed digitally. Before George Lucas had the digital res, uh, digital uh, revolution with the Phantom Menace, where he made everybody show, you know, like you had to upgrade your projectors to digital projectors to show the Phantom Menace. The last broadcast sent their movies, uh, sent their movie to theaters. The, the directors and producers, I mean, it's the same guys, the, the writers, producers, directors, same same two guys. They distribute it via satellite to theaters. Uh, found footage movie before the Blair Witch Project. We're not talking about this movie, and that's because it's indie, and the Blair Witch Project was a 50, it had a fifteen million dollar marketing budget. Viral marketing. There was the website. It was a Blair Witch Project. It was the BlairWitch.com, telling you like backstory for all this stuff. Huge viral marketing campaign. Last broadcast was made for nine hundred dollars. Uh, and it's a small movie. It's an independent movie. It's an amateur movie. You know, the people that are in it are just doing... It's like the parents and stuff. It's the actors who wrote it and everything. And it's their parents and, and their friends and, and things like that. And they would feed them the lines and then they would get the line back. And they'd be like, could you do it more like this? Um, but it becomes this interesting true crime story about these guys that are hosting a cable... A local access TV show in the 90s. And they go into the woods, into the, the Pine Barrens in Jersey, looking for the Jersey Devil. It's not a supernatural movie. There is no Jersey devil i'll go ahead and spoil it for you um but the premise is that like four go in one comes out and he's covered in the blood of the other ones what happened and so it's interesting it's a really interesting movie and this is getting its due from 101 films i think this is the first region a and b release from 101 films they're a uk-based company and i think this is their first uh dual region product uh so last broadcast let's see Tons and tons of uh, special features here. Some of them are, there's a new documentary about the making of this movie that runs, I think it's about a half an hour, looking back at the whole thing. Very, very, for me it's interesting because these guys were creating a digital movie shot on a digital, a consumer grade digital handheld equipment in a time when that was not being done yet. We were still trying to figure out the internet in 1990. Was it 1998, right? Uh, and they had been working on it for a couple of years before that. So we're talking about mid-90s, you know? Like, that's early for what we're talking about. They talk about how a hard drive was $1,000 per gig. So if you wanted a 4 gigabyte hard drive to edit, which still wasn't big enough, but that was enough to work on, uh, that was $4,000. And then you'd export, and then you'd start over with new footage, and then export that. Uh, really interesting stuff. And then there's this excellent booklet, which is uh, essays about... It's got two essays in here. Welcome to the Digital Age, The Last Broadcast and the Horrors of the Internet. That's by Philip Escott. Great uh, essay about the internet in horror movies, right? Like the, they talk about like the net and I mean, there's a lot of movies at that time. We're talking pre-Matrix, right? This is before the Matrix. Um, Factor Fiction uh, talking about, that's essentially what this movie is about is like how truth does not exist on the internet. Uh, it's talking about fake news. It's talking about the manipulation of truth in the service of entertainment. And that's what every news source has become now. Every news channel, it's entertainment, right? And this movie is tackling that 24 years ago. That's fascinating to me. Like, it was so ahead of its ahead of its time. Um, great stuff. Um, and remember, review at serialatmidnight.com. Just in from 88 Films is The Flying Guillotine Part 2. I've never seen Flying Guillotine Part 1, and I don't actually, is, is that, is that in print anywhere? Uh, Flying Guillotine is uh, like one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies, they, they say that here, uh, it's the sequel to Flying Guillotine, one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies, but um, uh, it's, uh, what, I'm looking for the year, 78, it's 1978 uh, martial arts action, very different thing. Um, 
I would have liked maybe like a flying guillotine box set or something like that. I don't think that's coming because I guess maybe the rights are all over the place. But uh, this has the different artwork. You know, here's the new artwork from Kung Fu Bob O'Brien. RP Kung Fu Bob O'Brien. Uh, here's the original poster art. We've got a, um, let's see, collector booklet. That's the, this is the limited edition and stuff. The collector's booklet, the slip case, that's limited edition. Barry Forshaw does the liner notes. And we've got double-sided poster. Uh, you know, these 88 films releases are epic. They're absolutely stellar. Um, so we've got our, here, here's our booklet, which, as you know, is one of my favorite things in a special edition Blu-ray. I love booklets because I like to read and learn more about the movies. And even if I'm not learning about the movies, I like deeper, more, for lack of a better word, I don't want to scare anybody away with this, but an intellectual conversation about the film. I like, I don't like, I like more than like, oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, bro. I like going deeper than that. I know a lot of you guys do too. So here's the new artwork and here's the original. So we get the poster again, limited. And a lot of you guys have made it very clear how you feel about these limited edition goodies. But remember, they work. They encourage you to buy as soon as possible because the stuff does sell out. And that's the goal. That's what they want to do. Uh, more people are going to buy these releases as soon as they are released than ever bef than, than in the future lifespan. Um, these companies make most of their money back on these releases when the releases are brand new. Uh, that's why this is done. Um, let's see. The on-disc features are... Audio commentary with Asian cinema, ex cinema expert uh, experts Mike Leader and Arn Venema. They do great commentaries. Uh, and then reversible sleeve. So that's mostly it. Uh, the uh, trailer and the commentary. But gorgeous package. And 88 Films continues to, to serve us with Asian cinema in editions we've never seen before. I say this a lot. Like These movies were off the table for a, a few decades. Between... They, these guys talk about it in their commentaries. These movies were not known, even in their native, like in Hong Kong and in China, these movies were not well known. They f they fell off the radar when Shaw Brothers kind of kind of became something else. You know, they were heyday. Heyday was in the 70s. When Shaw Brothers kind of um, declined, that's, that's a good word for it. A lot of these movies were not even represented on videotape, on VHS. They just weren't. So we're seeing things that have been off the table for a long time. We have two new entries, uh, two new arrivals from Warner Archive. That uh, was a small month. This was July. Uh, July was a small month for Warner Archive. August is looking great. You guys, King Kong, the original, RKO, 3033. Uh, King Kong, back in print from Warner via Warner Archive. It finally, like I think there's four Blu-ray releases coming. Anyway, looks like they're back on schedule for some bigger announcements and bigger releases. But these are the two that we got in July. So we got the Adventures of uh, Don Juan with Errol Flynn, some guy named Errol Flynn. What did he ever do? That's a joke. He did a lot of stuff. Um, this Warner Archive restorations are always stellar. I just realized my hair is spiking up on this side. Do I care? No. Um, the, it's Warner Archive restorations are like top notch. They always look, they don't share tech specs. And I think one of the reasons they do that is because they know how stupid the internet's become. That they're going to go be like, that's a new 4K restoration. Somebody's going to be like, should have been 8K. Or they're going to be like, hey, we sourced this from this print. Somebody's going to be like, well, it should have been so and so. You got all these people who are like, I noticed a problem at the 42 minute mark. And I think this disc needs a replacement send. So they just don't say anything. They just don't disclose most of this information. And I think that's probably the smart way to go because the less people know about stuff, the less armchair experts can do that thing that they do and then just get ignored anyway, right? Because that's what's happening is the companies are like, shut up. Um, it's true. <laughs> See the responses for some of these companies. They're like, no thanks, we're fine. Uh, so anyway, the, the Adventures of Don Juan. We got a new commentary. Actually, I don't know if it's new or not. Commentary by director Vincent. It's, well, it's not new. If it's commentary by the director. Commentary by director Vincent Sherman and historian Rudy Baylor. Warner Night in the Movies 1948. One of my favorite things on these Warner releases is the Warner Night in the Movies. Uh, so we got Vintage Newsreel, Oscar nominated, Joe Mc, uh, McDokes. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Joe McDokes. Um, comedy short, So You Want to Be on the Radio, Oscar-nominated travel short, Calgary Stampede, classic cartoon Hair Splitter, and the theatrical trailer. Uh, great stuff. What are the years? Is 1940... 48. 
it's later than I was thinking it was. Uh, this is notable, you guys. This is a Western. This is the Frisco Kid, Harrison Ford, uh, two years after Star Wars, and Gene Wilder, um, who was becoming, like, after Willy Wonka, right? He's becoming a huge star at this point, too, or at least a huge character actor. Um, directed by Robert Aldrich, which is great. Um, I'm excited. There's no special features here whatsoever, but I'm just excited that we have this Western restored for Blu-ray. The only conversation that I've seen about this to date is the cover art. And that's just a statement on the superficial society that we're living in where people would rather talk about the cover than talk about the movie. And that's not what we do. So there will be reviews for both of these showing up at SerialAtMidnight.com just as soon as I have time to write them. Uh, as you know, I love to write my reviews because I don't, I don't like small conversations about movies. I like having deeper conversations. And that's, that's what Serial at Midnight does. Follow me on TikTok for this 30-second blast. If you want that, that's where that is. Uh, we have two new upgrades. Well, they're not... Well, are they new? Okay, so uh, from Scorpion Releasing, there's the upgrade of Lone Wolf McQuaid and the upgrade of Death Warrant. We got some Chuck and some... Uh, some. Um, oh, my goodness. I couldn't remember his name. David Carradine. Uh, Bill. It's interesting. After Kill Bill, David Carradine just became synonymous with Bill, but I always knew him as Kane from Kung Fu. That was my go-to reference because I'm old, see? I'm 76 years old. This is all a deep fake CGI presentation. Um, and this movie is, like, every time I watch a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie from around this time, I'm like, oh, well, that's the best one. And the other day I said that, well, in my review for Hard Target, I said, is Hard Target Jean-Claude Van Damme's best movie? Because it's John Woo directing all that two-gun slow-mo action. And somebody was like, it's Bloodsport, bro. What are you talking about? It's Bloodsport. I'm like, Bloodsport's great. And when I'm watching Bloodsport, that's probably my favorite because you got Bolo Young doing it, like all the being so bad and it's like evil. But then I watch this and I'm like, this might be the best. This... And then I watch um, Lionheart, which is one of my favorites. And I'm like, no, no, this is the best one. So it's, whichever one I'm watching is kind of my favorite at the time. But these are, these are um, Scorpion releasing uh, new 2K scans from, uh, I think it was 2020? Let me see if they're, yeah, 2020 and 2020. Uh, and they were limited and they sold out, but now they're back in print with assistance from, um, from uh, who is helping? Is it Ronin? Um, anyway, they're back in print now, and you can find them on Amazon or anywhere you, wherever you buy your films. Uh, they got special features to brand new 2K scan, a brand new audio commentary with Steve Carver, uh, stars Robert Beltran, LQ Jones, rest in peace, LQ Jones. Uh, producer Yoram uh, Ben Ami, and it was moderated by C. Courtney Joyner. This, you know, some guy named C. No, my friend and some uh, uh, fine, fine film expert, historian, and filmmaker, uh, C. Courtney Joyner. So that's a reason to pick it up right there. A friend of Serial at Midnight, C. Courtney Joyner. And then a brand new on camera interview with uh, the stuff. You know what? Boom. Freeze it. <laughs> Read it. <laughs> All right, and then for uh, Death Warrant, we've got a commentary with director Darren Serafian. Uh, Serafian, I'm not sure. Uh, interview with Patrick Kilpatrick, who is he's great and everything. An interview with Art Lafleur trailers, and I'll hold that up for you too. Back it up just a little bit. All right, so both of these are out now. From the Film Detective, they've just released. Uh, this was July. They've just released Battle of the Worlds. Which is another, uh, this is a 60s sci-fi, but what year is this exactly? 1961. Uh, and it's directed by uh, Margariti, um, who is a, um, p -p 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 let's see, all new original feature production, this is what I wanted to talk about. All new, all new original feature production, a cinematic outsider, the fantastical worlds of Antonio Margariti from Ballyhoo Motion Pictures. You know that's going to be great. You know, Ballyhoo, you know, see Courtney Joyner. You know the quality that comes with the Ballyhoo documentary. Uh, Full-length commentary track by film historian Justin Humphreys. Original essay by Don Stradley. Margariti's World. Um, and it's presented from a 4K scan. How I would love to have had this in pure, true 4K instead of a downsampled 1080p. Remember, if you're seeing it in 1080p, you're seeing one-fourth of the pixels that you would be seeing if you we're seeing the 4K. Sometimes people are like, well, how, what, how much of a difference does it make to go from a 4K restoration to, the, to, to move that down to a Blu-ray? It's one-fourth of the quality. You're seeing one-fourth of the pixels, one-fourth of the, 
you can break this stuff down, but that's an easy way to explain it. Um, and it does make a big difference to see these things in 4K. Would have liked to have had it, but I know that there's a conversation coming about 4K too. A lot of people are like, well, why would they not put out the 4K? It cost them the same amount of money. No, it does not. It cost them a lot more, not just for the 4K restoration, which was already done. It cost them a lot more for the manufacturing. Not a little bit more, a lot more. It's a huge gap in uh, production cost before they even get it out the door. So we'll talk more about that soon. But uh, I love these Margariti movies. I've been a champion of Margariti movies. It's interesting. Like, maybe it's just the, like the criticisms that I hear. That you hear those more than you hear the compliments and things like that. Sometimes I, I talk about how much I love Margariti's movies and these Italian goofy sci-fi movies. And some people do not feel the same. It's the complainer thing, right? Like, complaints are louder than everything else. Uh, I love this stuff. I think this stuff is great. I think a lot of you guys do, too. And the idea of seeing these movies in uh, the restoration quality that we're getting now... I think a lot, it's like, this is the golden age for so many of us. But then there's always the guy who's like, nope, nope, the movie's stupid and your collection sucks. I don't think so. I think this is great. So this is brand new from the film detective. I'll I haven't reviewed it yet, but I will. So much stuff, right? There's so much stuff coming in. It's I'm a one man operation. There's only so much I can do. Uh, this is new from cult epics. And I'm going to have to be careful with this because there's some flesh on the packaging. Uh, this is Naked Over the Fence. You see, uh, some of you guys saw the name attached to this. You saw Sylvia Crystal and you're like, what? Um, this is the um, first major Dutch starring role of Sylvia Crystal right before she appeared in Emmanuel, okay? So I'm going to carefully put my finger here and I'm going to turn this over and you can read the description on the back of the box but it's a Dutch movie that is comedy, uh, music elements that I like, and then it turns into something that's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, I can show you some of the interior artwork as well. So there's the alternate cover, and there's yet another. There's more stuff here. I can't show you this because of the naked over the fence thing. You get to see that uh, <laughs> behind these discs. So I'm being very careful here. Um, but check it out. New 4K restoration, audio commentary. Oh, from the oh, from the original camera negative too, so you know it's going to be good. Audio commentary by biographer Harry Hossman. Uh, behind the scenes of Naked Over the Fence, a radio interview. Eight, uh, I'm sorry, B Movie Orchestra interview with a composer. Tons and tons of stuff. And this comes from Cult Epics, right? So this is just out. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be into this because you're into Cult Epics. Here's another one that's very specific, but a lot of you guys are going to be into it. Uh, Dr. Lamb. This is a Chinese movie from, or a Hong Kong movie, however you want to define it, from 1990, what is the year? Um, oh, it's 2003. I was thinking it was 90s. All right. It's 2003, you guys. Uh, Dr. Lamb is basically like a Chinese slasher horror movie. Like this guy is kidnapping these women and, you know. Let's see, how do they define it? A mentally disturbed, tax, a mentally disturbed taxi driver. Is there any other? I'm just kidding. Is there any other kind of taxi driver? We just see so many disturbed taxi driver stories. Um, lust for blood every rainy night and several young women are brutally murdered. He likes to take photos of the victims, dismembered bodies as his special mementos. Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of that because it's pretty graphic. And I know some of you guys, this is not a horror related video. So there's, I'm going to have to start warning my stuff. I think when I cover certain horror movies, I'm going to have to start doing like a disclaimer at the beginning of things because Google has gotten so strict and just like, and I've had some brushes with Google in the last little while that uh, really, I'm just like, is this where we're at now? So, and, and it is, that is where we're at now. So we have a booklet and it has a nice little essay in here about the movie by, who is this by? Callum Waddell is an academic author and document, an academic and author and a documentarian. Uh, this is a horror movie, but let I me mean, look, lots of info. So full review coming at some point to serial at midnight.com from unearth of oh, this who is this from this is from unearthed classics uh, unearthed films unearthed classics line and from unearthed animation the old man movie which is an estonian stop-motion animation movie for adults 
and it is weird. Weird. For review, it's serial at midnight.com. I, as soon as I watched this, I was like, I gotta talk about this. Um, not bad. It's not a bad thing. Just strange. I can't tell you the last stop motion anima- animation thing that I watched that was specifically geared for adults. It's like F words. Uh, is there nudity? I don't think there's nudity, but like violence, sexual situations, uh, a very adult thing. But at the same time, it's goofy. It's about premise of the movie is that uh, in Estonia is nor. I know a lot of people don't know where that is. It's North Europe, Northern Europe. Um, it's south of. I was just, I'm gonna say it's south of Finland and north of um, of uh, Slovakia. I think it is. No. <laughs> Look it up on the map. Look it up on the map. North Europe is the point. Um, and farmer is like it starts with a flashback. Um, it and it's uh, a farm. And I'm so sh- shaken by my geography thing because I just looked up where Estonia was, and I'm already like, wait a minute, where was it again? Um, it's this farmer that we flashback. It's this farmer who like he forgot to milk. He didn't milk his cow one day, and the cow exploded, and there was no milk for anybody. Silly, right? So all these years later, the old man is the new milk farmer and his cow needs to be milked too. And it goes away. It wanders off. So he's got to go find his cow. But the old twisted man who forgot to milk his cow 30 years ago or however long ago it was, he wants that cow first. And so it's like a race to get to the cow. It's very silly stuff, but it's just so trippy. For those that like to watch movies in altered states of consciousness, this is for you. Uh, It's based on a web series um, that, uh, you can find them on Facebook and uh, it's strange too. And for me, it's not funny. It's weird, but it's not funny. But maybe if you have Northern European sensibilities, it rings more true. Like, I think there's a cultural divide between me and the movie. Cause I see the jokes. I'm just like, okay, that was a joke. <laughs> it just doesn't do anything for me. But the animation is gorgeous. This thing won four awards in Estonia. Or maybe it's three. It won, it won awards in 2020. Uh, so it's definitely worth checking out if you're into stop motion animation, if you're an animation enthusiast. Um, it has uh, a handful of, the, I think, five of the shorts. It's not complete. It doesn't have all the shorts, but I think it's got five of them. Uh, a new English dub, so if you don't want to read subtitles, you can watch the dub. Although, I'm going to be honest with you, the original audio is better because that's the voices that it's the voices of the characters as they were created. The dub, dubs are always an interesting thing. That's a whole other video. It's like dubs often take weird departures that I'm like, why did you do that? Um, but you have the option, so you have both options. This is timely, you guys. This is super interesting to me. This is a Kate Bush documentary about... It's called The Hounds Run Up the Hill. Uh, It's a documentary about her album, The Hounds of Love, from 1985, which is the album that has that song that's in Stranger Things Season 4 that just gets played over and over. Didn't it go to number one in Europe or somewhere? Like, after all these years, like, after, what, it was 85 till now, all these years later, it went back to number one, or went to, maybe went to number one for the first time. I think she set an award, set a record for the oldest female recording artist to have a number one. Big deal. And this is the album that it came from. And this is just a coincidence that this came out like at the same time. No one could have known this. Um, but this is a documentary about the making of the album, the 1985 album, The Hounds of Love. And it says that it features uh, live and studio versions of every track on the album, review, critique, and comment on each song, behind the scenes footage, archive interviews with Kate Bush speaking at the time about the record. And it's her only given music press conference. Uh, press interview about the release of the album. So here is, I'm going to hold that up and you can read the back of it. So if you're a huge Kate Bush fan and you love that album, uh, this just came out. And it's actually, it's not out, it's not authorized by Kate Bush nor by EMI Records. So I'm not sure how that even works, how they can have live and studio versions of every track on the album um, and it's not authorized. I'm not sure how that works, but lo and behold, here it is. So for the Kate Bush Super freaks and just the Stranger Things people who wanted to like, who's this Kate Bush? Who's this Kate Bush? I want to know more. Well, here's a whole documentary about it. It's 90 minutes long, too. Uh, here's a new, um, let's see, who is this from? This is from MVD. Here's my my promo, my review copy cutout. Remember, they punch holes in my stuff. Uh, this is a, I haven't watched this yet, but this is, be careful what you wish for. It's a Ukrainian horror movie about a kid that is having sleep terrors. Again, 
weird timing on this stuff, right? This is from, uh, this is already done. Uh, and they, they get a, uh, a sleep, um, how do they say it here? Said in present day Kiev, Ukraine, fa frantic parents hire sleep specialists from the hospital to aid their 12 year old daughter's increasingly violent, bizarre, uh, night terrors. Interesting that they say bizarre, like a marketplace. It's not B-I-Z-A-R-R-E. -R -R -E. It's B-A-Z-A-A-R. Bazaar. Uh, little do they know their new employee, is that, a, is that deliberate? I don't know. Little do they know their new employee struggles with terrors from her own past, uh, as they all attempt to fight off a demon that spans back many generations. I, sounds interesting. Uh, horror hounds, be alert, be aware. This is, I, di I didn't even know what this was. If I, full disclosure, this was sitting for me to review. This came out earlier in 2022, I believe. And I was like, stone protectors, stone protectors. And I was like, wait a minute, that was a Super Nintendo game. I think Sega Genesis 2 maybe. Um, and then I started to do this deep dive on Stone Protectors because this looked really familiar to me. And here's the story of Stone Protectors. So it's 1993. The company that owns these, I can't remember the name of the company. Maybe it's here. This release is from Invincible and it is the full 13 episode series. The series ran 13 episodes. Uh, this is the entire series on two discs. It's standard definition, right? So it's not like, oh, look at that. It's tape sourced with all the problems that comes with tape sourcing. That's all that exists. Again, these people that are complaining about things on the internet, they're like, why did this cartoon from 1985 not get a 4K restoration? I'm like, because it's only on videotape. There are no, this stuff was, sh was shot on film, right? And they converted the tape. And in most cases, that film transfer, the film itself was destroyed probably 35 years ago in some cases like hallmark destroyed some stuff they got some elements and struck new standard definition transfers and destroy the original elements this stuff is not getting better restoration so this exists on tape masters uh but i was doing some research and i'm like okay so what happened so the company that owns the troll dolls in 1993 they're like well girls primarily like troll dolls but we want to get that boy audience the boy toy audience we got to get that the he-man you know the ninja it was the ninja turtles specifically um, they're like, we want that audience. So they make like, you know, action figure trolls is where it's, that's why they look like troll dolls. Cause they are the male version, you know, like boy toys for <laughs> troll, the troll doll company. And they all have a power. They all have a special power. They're in a band. They're in like a, a rock band. And that's another problem too. Cause it's kind of a hair band. It's kind of like a, wah, kind of that kind of a thing. And if you know, 1993, that was with like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, the wah that was going away for like 15 years at that point. Um, so out of it, I don't know if it succeeded or failed. I guess if it only got 13 episodes and a, a Nintendo, a 16 bit video game and some action figures, and it's now forgotten, I guess it failed, but that was the idea behind it. And if you grew up in 93 and you have fond memories of this, the whole shebang is now on DVD from who is this from invincible entertainment. That's right. Invincible, I went to their website, I was looking around. They're sitting on a lot of licenses that I don't think anything is being done with right now. Like a lot of cartoon, like King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, I think was the cartoon series. They've got that. It's just sitting there. No one's using it. No one's using that license. Let's get some money together and see if we can get King Arthur back on disc. Um, this is something I had never heard of either. This is Loggerheads. Uh, and I was like, well, I haven't heard of this. I don't think this got American distribution. I saw that it had a lot of European distribution. Um, and um, like all over the world, but I don't remember this ever coming on in America. It's a 2000, I think it's 2006. Uh, don't quote me, do your own research. Um, but it's an animated series that, is, this is the full thing. It's the full animated series. Uh, here, I'll, I'll flip it over and you can see that for yourself. You can freeze frame that, but like, I like the style. I, it's got that modern animation style. It looks really good. We no, no discs are overlapping. So I'm like, I like the packaging too. Um, so I don't know. I'll keep you posted on it and let you know what I think about it. But do you remember it? Cause if you do, let me know. Um, from here, let's talk about this really quick. Uh, from MVD Visual, uh, Bigfoot or Bust. This is a this uh, this is a few months old again too. Um, this is directed by Jim Wynorski from um, many cult movies with women in various states of dress. 
Uh, the thing about Bigfoot or Bust that I think is it's worth mentioning. So obviously it's a comedy, and look, even the tagline, the best Bigfoot movie ever. So I don't think anybody, I don't think any of the women in this movie are under forty, uh, and many of them are in their fifties or sixties. And that's not a complaint. That's I'm just I'm reporting, right? Because I did watch this, and I think that. And there's no nudity in the movie either, which is, I just want you guys to know. But if you're a big Jim Wynorski fan, if you like these comedies with the um, the video girls and the scream queens of, uh, you know, the, the 2000s era, the earlier era, this is Jim Wynorski doing that. Also, you know who's in here is, um, it's the director of uh, No Name and Dynamite, the spaghetti western that just came out last year. It was earlier this year. Uh, I did an interview with him. He's in this just as an actor, just an acting performance. And I was like, whoa. So if you want to see more from that guy, I have an actual interview with him. Um, from, who is this from? This is from Lightyear Entertainment. This is uh, Yellow Brick Road. Haven't watched it yet, but I'm hearing good things about this. It's a horror movie. Uh, in 1940, the entire top population of Friar, New Hampshire abandoned their homes and walked up a nearby mountain path, never to be seen alive again. 70 years later, a team of researchers intent on solving the mystery find the long forgotten trail marker and embark on a journey along the same cursed road. So there's a uh, director's commentary, there's new special features, walking the yellow brick road, practical effects, practical blood effects on an indie budget. That's cool. Um, new special edition cast and crew interviews. Uh, it sounds really good. I'm not familiar with this movie yet, uh, but I will be soon. And if you've seen this, I would like to know what you think about it and how you, how you found it to be. Uh, from, who is this from? Film Movement. Uh, film movement classics. This is Dona Flor and her two husbands. This is a, I want to say this is Brazilian. Um, and I'm looking for it. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, an instant international hit. It, basically this woman, uh, her husband dies. And so she begins a new love affair. And then the ghost of her husband returns and she continues like all three of them. <laughs> it's an interesting thing. It's the 70s movies from 1976. Uh, I I don't remember if I can show you everything here or not. So I better be conservative because goodness knows YouTube is. Goodness knows uh, Google is. And that's fine. Sometimes I say these things. But like here, <laughs> uh, Sometimes I say these things and people are like, Hey, pal, you know what? You know the platform. It's your choice. You don't have to. Don't complain about it. Don't make the video and complain about it. I'm not trying to complain. I'm just saying I have to be very, very careful. Sometimes more careful than I would think that I would need to be. So it's the world we're living in. Um, so anyway, we've got a booklet with an essay here. Oh yeah, there's definitely, <laughs> I gotta, there's nudity on the back of the thing. Hopefully they didn't show up on camera. And hopefully me saying that word just a second ago, the N-U-D-I-T-Y word, because um, YouTube automatically captions this stuff. Hopefully that's not a problem either. Oh geez, do I have to cut the whole thing? Hopefully not. Um, two things that I, I did not, these are not new. These are not new. Uh, these VHS editions of Tourist Trap and Puppet Master, two full moon features releases. These are like the VHS, but they're not VHS. There's Blu-rays inside, but they're VHS packaging. And uh, so I already had Tourist Trap, but this is the, let me show you this. This is the uncut version. Because I'm not even super familiar with what exactly happened, but the Tourist Trap version that I have, that Full Moon, Charles Band released the first time, had uh, some cuts, uh, four or five minutes. Let's see if this actually says how many minutes have been restored. Uh, I'm not seeing it off the top of my head, but it had some cuts to it. And it had a weird slowdown issue on the last reel. And there's like a chase scene, and like the person would be running, and then she'd slow down for a second, and then she'd start running again. I don't know if it was a conversion issue or whatever. This is the full uncut movie. They've tracked down the full complete print. It's a new version of the same movie, but it's complete. Um, so for that, that's cool alone. And it also comes with an action figure of Mr. Slauson, who's Chuck Connors in the movie. Uh, I'll reference you to the Rifleman. The Rifleman? The Rifleman. The Rifleman? <laughs> Pick your poison. Um, but then I always like, when talking about Chuck Connors, I also like to reference the Spaghetti Western, Kill Them All and Come Back Alone, as 
peak awesome Chuck Connors. And not enough people are talking about that movie. So if you're like Chuck Connors, kill them all and come back alone. Um, so anyway, action figure here. Or is he? Does he move? He's not really an action figure. He's. They call it an action figure. It, actually, it does look like he's got uh, arm joints. But I'm going to call him a mini figure. That's what I'm going to call him. And then uh, Puppet Master, the classic, as we all know. Um, this box is a little beat up, but I don't care. I, I'm actually not even sure that I'm going to keep the boxes. I know some of you guys are like, for shame, what? Riot. Dear Serial at Midnight, I just heard you're not keeping the box. I demand <laughs> a recall of this video. This video has color timing issues that the the video creator did not intend. And I'm like, actually, that's what I wanted it to look like. Recall, please. Replacement disc, please. Replacement video. Puppet Master. <laughs> because we're just having fun, right? Uh, Puppet Master, the Blu-ray DVD combo pack. Um, and it comes with a little blade figure. And I guess they're continue, they've continued the line with Torch. I just have this one. Has anybody picked up all of these? And if so, how many did they do? How far did they go with us? I guess you just go to the Full Moon website. And I might do that. But what do you think? Let me know. Um, let's talk about books. we got two books to talk about. And I don't think either one of them are new. But they're new to me. So maybe they'll be new to you. I did not realize. This is full, conf full disclosure confession time. I did not realize that Arrow Video also did books. I didn't know. Uh, and so I completely missed the Blair Witch Project book it's a it's a book about the making of the Blair Witch Project by Russ Gom and if you're like well how much of a story can there be uh there's a story this is not there are there are some pictures in here but this is essentially a book about the making of the Blair Witch Project and I am fascinated by that go back to our conversation about the last uh the last broadcast Here's the story of the Boy Witch Project. We got uh, Chapter 1, America, Summer, 1999. Chapter 2, England, Autumn, 1999. Talking about the phenomenon. Chapter 3, the 90s and the Blair Witch Experience. Uh, the Black Chapters, Old School, The Hack Sand 5, The Legend of Ellie Kedward, The Woods the Woods Movie, Phase 2. It's like, it's over 100 pages. It clocks in at 118 pages, 119. Um, and I have not read it yet. I have a fairly full plate, as you guys know, but uh, I definitely thought that this was very cool. So I wanted everybody to know that this exists. And if you're a big fan of the Blair Witch Project uh, and you want to know more about the making of that movie, because I think most of the special features on the Blair Witch um, DVD and subsequent Blu-ray are like in universe. They're not actually how the movie, maybe there's a commentary talking about how it was made, but I know a lot of them are like continuing the mythology, like, you know what I mean? Like it's in universe, it's story stuff. It's not development stuff. So, but here's another thing that I did not know about until just recently is cult cinema. This book from Arrow, how do they, just as Arrow. So we'll say Arrow books. I don't know, but it's from Arrow. And um, it is a book about cult cinema and it's gorgeous. And if you like the cover art, it includes this lithograph. I mean, just look at all the stuff that we love here. So here's Vincent Price. I'm looking at it. I see Romero. There's Romero. We've got Wes. Wes is here as well. Um, I mean, it's great stuff here. Uh, this is a book of, let me be very careful with this lithograph. It's over 200 pages. I think it's about 260, 267, something like two, 248. Um, and it is loaded cult movies, cult directors, cult actors, cult genres, cult distribution. They talk about, now here's the thing, some of these are reprints of the essays that were included in the original Arrow Blu-rays. You know, this limited edition booklet that I told you we were going to talk about at the end of the video, this is what we're talking about. So when those booklets are gone, where do the essays go? Well, here's a book with some of them. Not all of these are old essays though. Not all of these are essays from the Blu-rays. Some of these are brand new for this book. Now this book was, I think it's 2016. And again, I didn't know about it. And even more than that, I think it's a limited edition but it's still around. I don't know how many copies are left as of this, as of this video. So if you want it, go get it. Um, but here's what, like I did some research on this in, in the UK, which is where I think it came out first. It was like 65 pounds, which is pretty steep. Um, 
And I guess in 2016, a lot of people were like, well, I already have these essays in the Blu-rays. But now here we are six years later, those essays are gone. The Blu-rays are, if they're in print, the limited edition booklets are long gone. And it's $39.99 uh, on Amazon US. So the price is about half. It's actually more than half off of what it was when it came out in the UK. So for me, I think that's a fair price. And these essays are pretty great. So we got Tim Lucas on the fall of the House of Usher. Um, we've got, let's see, the, the, here's, the movies, The Burbs. Kenneth Chase Souza on The Burbs. Um, we've got uh, Stephen Thrower on Zombie Flesh Eaters. There's an article about Tinto Brass, uh, an, an essay. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman, Wes Craven, George Romero. Uh, Vic Pratt on Boris Karloff, comedy and Karloff. It's specifically focusing on the comedy films of Karloff in, through the lens of The Raven is what they're talking about. Uh, the Forbidden Zone, Hervé, Vill Hervé Villachez uh, in uh, Richard Elfman's Forbidden Zone. Um, David DelVal on Vincent Price. Uh, there's an article about, or I keep calling them articles, an essay on Jalo, Blood and Black Gloves, um, Canadian exploitation movies, um, let's see, Teenage Mutant Comet Zombies, uh, James Oliver on Empty City Sci-Fi, like Night of the Comet, that sort of thing. Uh, it came from Super 8. Is this a whole thing about Super 8 movies? It's, for me, it's incredible. Oh, look, first page I open up to, Paul Sorvino. Rest in peace, Paul Sorvino. Um, so anyway, I don't know. I, I wanted to shout it out because I think that... And this book's got nudity in it too, so again, I gotta be careful. There's a whole thing about spaghetti westerns, playful revisionism, uh, the spaghetti western. So it covers Day of Anger. That comes. Uh, was this in Day of Anger? Let me see. They usually tell you if it's included from something else. No, that doesn't say anything. Uh, so anyway, this is a gorgeous book. It's full of essays about the movies that we love, and uh, I wanted you guys to know about it because I think it's really great. Um, Especially at the price that it's at now and knowing that it won't be around forever. I wouldn't want anybody that wants that to miss out on it. All right, guys, that's the end of this Fresh Flavors. These videos are huge. Uh, let me know what you think about these movies in the comments below. And we can always let's continue the conversation. I'd love to continue talking to you guys about this stuff. The magic, uh, the fun is in the back and forth when we talk about this stuff. And we just kind of geek out about the stuff that we love. So let's do that in the comments below. Thank you so much. Take care. Until next time, I will catch you later.